Hello and welcome back to Around the World in 80 Telescope, a live 24 hours webcast that is part of the 100 Hours of Astronomy project for the International Year of Astronomy. You are joining us at the European Southern Observatory headquarters near Munich in Germany as we visit some of the most advanced telescopes both on and off the planet. So now we're going to the Vatican Telescope, which is also on Mount Graham in Arizona. Before we will actually join them... We are now going live to the Vatican Telescope. Hello, Richard. Good evening, Olivier. Good evening to you. So could you introduce yourself and your, your colleague who is sitting next to you? Yes, yeah, so I'm uh, Father Richard Boyle, Jesuit priest astronomer on the staff of the Vatican Observatory. And uh, I have another Jesuit with me visiting our uh, Vatican Observatory Group in Tucson and up here for the week at the VAT. Um, maybe I'll let him say hello. Yeah, so hi, I'm Richard D'Souza, also another Richard, and I'm here for six weeks uh, at the Vatican Observatory doing a small project. I'm originally from India and I'm also working also on the virtual observatory, putting the, the Vatican Observatory telescopes online and using all our Schmidt data from 50, last 50 years making them available to the public. But Rich has lots more to say. Super high-tech stuff. Uh, tell me, your telescope is really very special. Can, can you describe it? Um, yes, we saw um, about an hour ago the LBT, wonderful uh, uh, webcast, and they presented in the uh, introductory video the University of Arizona Mirror Lab. Um, it was uh, Dr. Roger Angel of University of Arizona that um, about 15 years ago uh, wondered and uh, tried, could uh, large telescope mirrors be made out of uh, less costly glass? They had been made in ceramic glasses up to that point. And maybe get the shape of the mirror right out of an oven. So uh, the Vatican uh, mirror, what became the Vatican telescope mirror, was made by the University of Arizona Mirror Lab in the 1.8 meter size. You don't want to build it as large as now the LBT until you prove that technology. So the Vatican uh, telescope is uh, the test bed now having proven 
that new Mera technology of the spun cast, the stressed lap for then polishing the already uh, parabola shape. Um, and it's um, a, an, an, a focal ratio of f1.0. Uh, before that, telescopes weren't made out of such a deep dished mirror. Uh, by the fabrication challenge up to that, and then the focusing challenge to put a secondary mirror in it. In classical telescopes, you, you can put the secondary mirror in focus by moving it in a, an easy manner. But on the Vatican telescope now, you're in focus only if you move that secondary mirror a hair's breadth. Otherwise, you're out of focus. So all that technology has now been proven successful uh, on the Vatican telescope. That's really impressive. F over 1 is amazing. And w which kind of science do you do with this telescope? Um, it's diverse. Um, with the Vatican Observatory staff, we're um, about nine professional astronomers on the staff. Um, some never come to the telescope. They're doing theoretical astrophysics. Uh, Father Bill Steger on our staff, for example, the professional cosmologist. Um, we have Brother Guy Consolmagno, who is an expert in solar, assist, solar system astronomy. Um, and he, with his collaborators, um, one from Northern Arizona University, one from Oklahoma, uh, they work in what I, what I call a solar system, uh, working on uh, asteroids and the Kuiper Belt objects. So they've been doing colors of asteroids and shapes. Um, moving out of the solar system to the Milky Way, um, I work uh, on stars in the Milky Way system with uh, my collaborator Dave Phillip from Union College. Uh, and uh, the professional group in uh, Lithuania at Vilnius Observatory. Um, where there, we use the, uh, the same excellent CCD camera uh, for observing stars in our Milky Way galaxy, star clusters. And we work with a filter system that can probe very efficiently and accurately into even uh, dusty areas in the plane of the Milky Way galaxy where we can determine the types of all, all the stars. Um, and then our director of Vatican Observatory, Father Jose Funes, works in nearby galaxies external to the Milky Way galaxy with uh, Rob Kennicott. Um, uh, so it goes on like that. Um, Actually, we, we have an image, an image of yours. I, I guess it's one of your program. Uh, could yes. you tell us what it shows? Yes, this is um, one of these uh, dark cloud areas in our own Milky Way galaxy. Um, so I observed this with our camera uh, several months ago, and uh, it's a collaboration with the group in Lithuania I mentioned. Um, so we're probing here with reasonably short exposure times on the Vatican telescope, um, somewhere t uh, 10 to 30 minutes, where we probe into that dark cloud. This is uh, nicknamed this area the North American Nebula because it looks like the map of North America on the left out of the picture field of view here and a pelican area on the right. So we probe right in the middle of this uh, picture here. And with this filter system, we determine the uh, types of all those stars. It's about 100 stars here. And some of them are ver look very red. We do this in uh, seven or eight filters where we need to measure very precisely the colors of these stars. And some of them appear then very red, but they're not red stars. They're hot blue stars that have been, they've lost their blue light